The goals of ECHO for Tetralogy of Fallow are to define the anatomical features in detail. This includes assessing the degree and nature of right ventricular outflow tract obstruction, assessing the location and size of the VSD or whether multiple VSDs are present, evaluating the degree of aortic override and evaluating the degree of right ventricular hypertrophy. In addition to these core features, it's essential to also perform a full echocardiographic study to identify other associated findings, including coronary artery anomalies or aortic arch anomalies, systemic venous anomalies or pulmonary venous anomalies, or the presence of aorto-pulmonary collateral vessels. One of the most helpful views to assess right ventricular outflow tract obstruction in Tetralogy of Fallow is the basal slice in a parasternal short axis plane with the probe as shown. Here's an example showing the left atrium, LA, right atrium, RA, right ventricle, RV, aorta, AO, and pulmonary artery, PA. In this view, the anterior deviation of the outlet septum can be appreciated. We can also check for the presence and extent of the adjacent right ventricular, RV, muscle bundles, which we can see are present here. The pulmonary valve, main pulmonary artery, branch pulmonary artery sizes are also assessed in this plane. The large VSD is also clearly profiled in the short axis plane extending from the perimembranous to outlet septum. Similarly, the subcostal right anterior oblique view, shown by the probe here, is also excellent in profiling the degree of subvalvular obstruction. If we look at the 2D imaging, here's the right atrium, right ventricle, aorta, and pulmonary artery. We can see that there is deviation of a long outlet septum with adjacent RV muscle bundles. And now, if we look at the colour imaging, we can see that colour flow aliasing starts at the same level, low down in the right ventricular outflow tract. Again, the outlet perimembranous VSD is profiled in short axis, and on the colour imaging we can see that there is low velocity left to right flow across the VSD. There is considerable variability in the morphology and size of the pulmonary valve in Tetralogy of Fallow. This should be carefully assessed as it impacts surgical decision making. If the valve is a normal size, then the patient may be suitable for a valve sparing approach, but if the right ventricular outflow tract is too narrow, then a transanular patch may be required. The valve sparing technique avoids the development of significant pulmonary regurgitation after surgical repair, whereas the transanular patch results in free pulmonary regurgitation. Let's look at two different examples of pulmonary valves in Tetralogy of Fallow. This first parasternal long axis view tilted anteriorly profiles the right ventricular outflow tract, RVOT, which appears well developed. The pulmonary valve is mildly dysplastic with mild supravalvular tethering of the pulmonary valve leaflets. The size of the pulmonary valve annulus is normal. There is anterior deviation of the outlet septum, and on the colour imaging, we can see flow acceleration below the pulmonary valve leaflets, as indicated by the colour aliasing. This patient underwent a tetralogy of fallow repair with preservation of the pulmonary valve leaflets. The second example demonstrates a significantly hypoplastic and thickened pulmonary valve with very restricted leaflets, a small effective opening and a narrow jet of blood flow. This patient required a transanular patch as part of the Tetralogy of Fallow repair. The size of the main pulmonary artery and branch pulmonary arteries also vary considerably and should be assessed preoperatively as the branch pulmonary arteries may require surgical patching or augmentation at the time of Tetralogy of Fallow repair. When a continuous wave Doppler is placed across the right ventricular outflow tract, there is typically a combination of dynamic and fixed obstruction. Dynamic obstruction is characterised as a dagger-shaped trace on spectral Doppler, which profiles the dynamic narrowing below the pulmonary valve. This dynamic trace is usually superimposed over a parabolic-shaped systolic contour indicating fixed obstruction which typically reflects fixed stenosis along the line of the Doppler trace, such as of the pulmonary valve or main pulmonary artery. 
Here's another example showing that the Doppler trace of Tetralogy of Fellow appears as a double envelope, reflecting both dynamic obstruction of the right ventricular outflow tract, shown by the dagger-shaped trace, and fixed obstruction shown by the parabolic-shaped systolic contour. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.